Welcome to Ahkam SOS, the show that discusses Islamic practices and duties by Muslims by His Eminence, the Grand Ayatollah Sayyid Salaam Shirazi. I'm your host, Muslim Shah. And joining me is Sheikh Ali Ma. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh Ali. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Sheikh Ali, we've been discussing um, you know, Salah, the prayer of Salah. We discussed uh, places, we discussed the Rukban, we discussed what to recite, uh, Mustahabat, and also what is Wajib. Let's move our discussion now towards the Rukun. And the first question I will ask you, Sheikhna, is according to Sayyid Salih Shirazi, how does one perform the Rukhu? A'udhu billahi al-sami'i al-alim minash shaytan al-rajim, bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, wa sallallahu ala muhammadin wa ala al-qaybin al-ta'irin wa rahmatullahi wa sallam. The next wajib and also Rukun, the key element in Salah and victory is the record itself, the act of record. So the first one we had was the niyyah, then was the takbir al ihram. So the next one is ruh. We had also recitation. Recitation, okay. Hamd and surah and, and, and the dhikr and third and fourth account. Yes, now we, we are in the record uh, wajib in the salah, in which um, the record is performed uh, in every single rak'ah. So the rak'ah you bring in. The salah with you have to have the ruku as well. Yes. Uh, within that um, uh, act of salah, and of course, you have to place uh, the palm of your, of your hands on your knees. That's how you okay. the, uh, the ruku. And of course, you have to mention and recite the dhikr. Uh, there's two types of dhikr. Watch the dhikr. Either you say Subhanallah three times, Subhanallah, 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 three times. Or you say once, Subhan Rabbi Al Abim or Bihamd. And that would be sufficient for uh, performing the Rukhu. So it is um, also mandatory and wajib for the one to continue between these words. So when, when you say Subhan Rabbi Al Abim or Bihamd, together. So you can't say Subhan and then keep calm for a few seconds. And Rabbi, no, continuous always. In Salah we have continuous. Continuation is very important. Okay. Uh, also in Arabic, you say it and utter it in Arabic, and it is mustahab. Just to add in this regard, that mustahab to repeat the dhikr of um, let's say Subhana Rabbi Alhamdulillah three times or five times or seven times to so odnam odd numbers yes. onwards upwards. Okay. So it's mustahab. So oh, because I've heard. Saying once is wajib, three times was to have. But you can actually say five, seven, nine times? Exactly. Oh, wow. Shikha, can I say subhanallah once? Is that sufficient in the report? Well, it depends. If the time is too short, you have only, let's say, two or three minutes to the um, sunset, and you haven't prayed your salat yet. No. Um, in this case, yes, you can drop. Uh, the other two, subhanAllah, and just say it once. As I said, this is only to do with regard to the so extreme short cases. Time. Exactly. Oh, there's a danger, oh, and such, such like. Sheikh, sure. what about mustahabat? What is it mustahab to recite in Initially, um, before going to the record, before we head for the record, mustahab to say Allahu Akbar. So let's say, you finished Hamd and Surah. You finished the Surah, you want to go to the Rukhwa. Mustahab say Allahu Akbar, Takbir. Okay. And then you yes. head for the Rukhwa. And you start the Rukhwa. That's the first Mustahab. Uh, the second and other Mustahab is, and of course, by the way, for before I, I move on to this um, act, that uh, you must be upright. Okay. Before going to record, that's important. Okay, so Qiyam must be the. Yes, must be Qiyam before going to record. So, arguably, aren't you already standing because you've said Surah Al Ham, you've recited a small Surah, Surah Al Bawfi. So, isn't that enough? Or are you saying that you have to finish, there has to be a little pause before you go into it? No, it's just that the, the matter of when you want to perform the record, you must be in, in the upright position. 
you know, upright decision, and then you go to the court. That's okay. the whole idea. Because sometimes, in some cases, uh, when, you, when you forget the record, and you want to come back from the before going to the sujood, yes. you must, again, stand, stand upright, up. yes. and then and go then to, the, to, yeah. to the court yes. for sujood. So it's just that it's differentiating between um, yeah. uh, that, that method. Um, the other uh, mustahab within the rukur is uh, it's mustahab to push your knees back with your palm of your hands. Okay. You know, okay, straight so in. Fully, fully stretching exactly. what we call you know, always come, your hamstrings. Fully stretching your hamstrings, I guess. Exactly. And, and uh, also your calves a little bit. And also to stretch your uh, neck so it would be in line with your back. So it's okay, all okay. straight. So what we're trying to do is fully lock the knee. Exactly. Right, so by pushing on the knee, so fully lock the knee, stretching the calves and the hamstring, uh, having the back straight. With the neck. To get exactly. stretched with, with the neck. Uh, okay, okay. So where, where should you be facing with the neck? Is it okay to be like this or like that in Rukul? Or it has to stay fixed in the topper? You should look at your feet. Okay, so in between your feet. Oh, exactly. okay. That's give, where you look. Gives a good look idea the where, where the, front. the neck should be. Sure. And that gives how much the Salah is tend to be in, performed in a state of humbleness and humiliation before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's yeah. how you are lowering your gaze so it's sure. towards your feet and not the front. Any more mustahabat? And there's another mustahab, a very hot mustahab, uh, which has a great, great reward and thawab, and that is by saying the dhikr of Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa Ah, so After the, the, the wajib dhikr was subhanallah, 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 or subhanallah, rabbi al abu wa bihamdi. So it's important to mention this uh, dhikr, very important, very rewarding, Inshallah. and brings blessing, of course. And um, also, another mustahab, when you have completed the record recitation, so you stand up to go to what? To the sujood. Yes. That's mustahab, when you stand up to say, Sama'Allah, Hidman, Hamida. That's another mustahab as well. That ends the act of ruku. Shaykh, what if one cannot perform the ruku properly? What should that one do? Initially, the one who is uh, medically unable to um, perform the ruku, he's not allowed to straight away uh, sit down and do the ruku. There are stages before reaching that stage of sitting down or, or even uh, laying down and, and, and doing the ruku. So one must initially lean to something. So let's say lean on the wall or a stick okay. and then do the ruku. Okay. Uh, that's the first stage, um, as mentioned by the Sayyid in his book. And if it's not possible, then the Sayyid says he must perform the Rukur to the best as he can. So the, as much as you can, um, by leaning on something or... Okay, so what I understand from this is that there's two issues. One is that you don't have balance in the Rukur, and the other one is maybe you can't bend all the way down towards your knees. So if there's an issue with balancing, you use some aid to help exactly. you. Exactly. I have the issue with how far down you can bend and bend as low as you can yeah. possible, I guess. Exactly. Well, as you, as you mentioned um, just now, if that person cannot bend at all uh, due to the back pain and so forth, then he needs to sit down and then do the report and sit in position. So that's fine. Because bending is important. The whole idea of recourse is to bend going down. Uh, that, that's in the, the most required in, in the rakur. Now, if uh, one wants to perform the rakur in the state of sitting, okay. this person must make sure that he does the, um, the rakur in a way that his face reaching almost his knees, so oh, okay. almost uh, near to his knees, okay. so for the rakur while sitting. And as the Sayyid says, and it is better if he bends until his face is near the place of sujood, oh, wow. till this position. I see. So you would have the subject of Rukur fulfilled um, and established in the Salah. So you can't just bend a bit. And yes, I think it's what you were saying in regards to having the back and the neck straight. So exactly. in order to have that, exactly. you have to really, really, uh, if, you, if you sit to your knees, you really have to get low in order to get that back straight and with the neck as well. 
So yeah, like you say, it, it does make sense for it, for it to be uh, you know, as such to fulfill the condition. So, Shaykhna, what happens if someone has abnormal hands and knees? For example, if someone has short arms and they can't touch their knees, or if, if someone has you know short legs and then it's awkward for them to put their, their hands on their knees and to perform the work. If somebody, let's say, they have a, a long hand, both hands are very long in a way that if they put the palm of their hands uh, on their knees, they only bend just a few degrees. Yes. Just a very, I mean, how can I say, um, just a few bending, just a bit, so in which um, you cannot say this is a proper report. Or if somebody's hand is too short, both hands are too short, in a way that if he bends to reach the palm on the knees, he will bend too much, he will yes. go towards, so it will be like his head facing the earth, yes. and instead of, um, uh, you know, the head facing towards the other leg. In this case, the sage says, this is abnormal. Yes. Both hands are abnormal. The two long hands and two short hands, they're abnormal. In this case, you go back to the normal, to the orf, okay. the customary. Yes. And you see how people do the rukur, then you do the rukur. So the one who has, let's say, a very long hands, um, he just puts his hands on his thighs, thighs yeah. and he does the rukur. And also, um, let's say, those who have shorter hands, then they can just as well do the, um, the rukur, Till they reach the state of going down, and the head is towards the other end. So you go back to the normal and customary way of uh, performing the report. So you look at the others, how they perform the report, so you do so. Absolutely. Jezo, we discussed uh, in, in Salah and in Qiyam that motionlessness is, is required. You're not allowed to be swinging left or right, and you know, God forbid, if, if you get nudged. If you you know you break the frame of the salah, you have to start again. Is this the same case with the rukuk? Of course, motionless and stationary is something required uh, from the first second you begin the salah for the takbir al haram, and all the way to the salam. However, a slight movement won't affect. You know, it's just a slight movement. It's not going to really affect the salah. But in overall, you, might, you must be in a state of motionless and um, calmness, and you perform the, the dhikr and the salah. However, if the fingers move, let's say, up and down or to the left and the right, sometimes you know fingers are move, moving. Um, it happens sometimes. You want to point to something, you know, to somebody, you know, I left my stuff there, for example. So you just move your finger to point. This kind of wound is fine in the end of the That's not going to affect uh, the salah or even you don't have to repeat the dhikr. It's just the main thing is that the hands and the body mainly not to uh, move. Yes. Shaykhna, is there anything that makes the ruku void? Is there any, you know, something I may say or may do that may uh, invalidate the ruku? If somebody um, and deliberately tries to utter the word of, of, of Rukur, the words of the citation of the Rukur, Dikr, before reaching the full state of Rukur. So on his way he says, Allahu Akbar, before going to the state of Rukur, he says, Subhan Rabbi al oh, So when he reaches the Rukur, he said, Rabbi al Alim wa bihamdi. The Subhana, he said it while he was too early. early. Heading down to yes. the Rukur. In this case, if it's deliberate, the Salah will pass. Ah. And that's important for many of our youth yes. uh, who have just recently began to pray. Yes. They have to make sure that they don't speed up and you know, swiftly say the Dhikr unless they are in a stable position and motionless, and then they can say the Dhikr. Yes. So you go to full Rukur, and then you begin, Subhan Rabbi Rabbi so likewise, when you want to raise your head from the record and get up from the record, again, if the, if the one um, recites some of the or part of the 
record recitation while he's going up will also make the salah batil. So likewise, if somebody wants to uh, finish the ruku and raise his head from the ruku to go to the sujood, again, if somebody deliberately says, let's say, in the ruku, Subhana Rabbi al he says it while he's going up, moving. So he just left the ruku' while saying wa bihamdi or aqim wa bihamdi. In this case, if it's deliberate, then it will make the salah void and bad as well. You must utter and recite the full words of ruku' while you're in the state of full ruku'. So you're in the ruku', you say Subhana Rabbi al aqim wa bihamdi, and then your head up, and then you go for the sujood. So in between, if in the movements, going up or going down, you mention part of the uh, record on your way, then it will make the salah That's important, especially for the youth, to make sure that even if they pray fast, not to mention this uh, fact, that they must be motionless, they must be stable and mention. And the same thing applies to sujood, the same thing applies to the yeah, yeah. the same applies to tasbihat, uh, hamd and surah and so forth. Ahsan Shaykh. what happens if I'm in Nuruqo and by accident someone nudges me or you know, sometimes there's a kid running around and he may push me or something like that. Um, you know, if I get nudged a little bit or if I get pushed where I take a step or two steps forward or you know, <laughs> if I get knocked onto the floor what happens then to my salah? Well, I've mentioned this previously with regard to the posture of the salah. If the posture of the salah is preserved, you just have, you just have to go back to the words you mentioned and you said while you were in the moving state. So they pushed you and you said, Subhana Rabbi al Adma bihamdi. This Rabbi, you just repeat the uh, dhikr again while you're in a state of motionless and stability. Um, but if you were pushed in a way that the posture of the salah was destroyed, then of course you have to repeat the salah. In this case, uh, you know, you've been uh, pushed a uh, couple of meters from yes. where you started praying. So mm -hmm. in this case, the posture has been destroyed for the salah, then you have to repeat the salah again. Yes, uh, thank you very much, Sheikh. And uh, thank you to all those who joined us on Ihqam SOS, inshallah. Your hamstrings will be nice and stretched in salah. As well as your back. Join us again for the next episode of Ahkam SOS with the Muslim Shah and Shaykh Mahasaya. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh.